President Trump hosts NCAA national champions at the White House. It seems that virtually every day Donald Trump and his administration are embroiled in a new fiasco. The Mueller investigation is ongoing, indictments are coming out, and the president can t help himself from picking fights on Twitter. His targets run the gamut, from the New York Times and CNN, to NFL players and ESPN hosts. There is even friendly fire directed at fellow Republicans like Mitch McConnell and Ed Gillespie. What Trump may not realize and what new data shows is that he may be tweeting his way into losses in 2018 and 2020. Ten months into his presidency, the failure of any one single scandal to sink his administration has led some in the media to suggest that Trump is like Teflon, with the gram that would stick to and ruin other politicians simply slipping right off. But the numbers show that nothing could be further from the truth Trump as scandals aren't just damaging him. They re causing swing voters to reevaluate both his priorities and the very health of the economy. The Messina Group recently completed a long term research project looking at a specific group who helped decide the 2016 election white voters in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin who supported Barack Obama in 2012 but in 2016 did not vote for Hillary Clinton, instead, choosing to either stay home or vote for Trump or a third party candidate. What we found combined with this month's election results should worry Trump and every ally who has hitched their wagon to his fast-burning star. Among the swing voters most critical to his viability, Donald Trump isn't he just vulnerable, he is harming himself. Even as Wall Street reaches new highs in profitability and Trump endlessly brags about his stock market numbers, these voters aren't he seeing the improvement in their own lives. And, most worryingly for Trump and Republicans, the president's outlandish statements caused the voters we spoke with to believe that he has focused more on his own petty dramas and on improving their families' lives. Trump's behavior and the endless parade of controversies he drums up? They re how he loses. At the beginning of April, we convened an online focus group of voters in Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania who supported Obama but not Clinton. The overriding opinion expressed by the participants was that, yes, Donald Trump was racist sexist, and offensive, but he was shaking up Washington and working to improve the economy. As one woman in Michigan put it, Trump wants to change things that everyone has been complaining or talking about for years. It has a belief that was underlined by the results of our polls from both July and October, which showed that key voters in these three states gave Trump much higher marks on his handling of the economy than his job approval among this subset of voters. A late October poll had Trump at a net minus 23 points on job approval, but only minus 7 on handling the economy. This trend is consistent with what public polls are showing. In the latest NBC-WSJ poll from the end of October, Trump's job approval was minus 20, but his rating for handling the economy was plus 5. That said, the white Obama non-Clinton voters we surveyed were clear, if the economy does not improve measurably, they are not going to give Trump a second chance and they already have a clear reason to explain his failure, Twitter. Consistently, the members of our focus groups worried that Trump was so preoccupied with picking Twitter fights and the general chaos of his administration that he was not focusing on making the economy better. This sentiment is backed by quantitative data that offers a peek at Trump as political kryptonite. Based on the focus group findings, we drafted four distinct messages about Trump and his handling of the economy. In one, we explained that he had stacked his cabinet with billionaires who weren't he looking out for everyday Americans. In another, we offered 